In the Nine Network's continuing initiative, Water Matters, we've explored topics like the infrastructure that supplies our water and the connection between water, our health, and our ecosystem. The latter includes an endangered species of much interest to local researchers. Jim Kircher paid them all a visit. What we came to see at the St. Louis Zoo is not on display. It's behind the herpetarium where they keep the snakes and the reptiles. And if you come on the right day, you might get to meet Irene. Not the woman in the wetsuit, that's Shauna. Irene is the big salamander that she has just taken out of its nest. It's one of our female hellbenders. How old? Uh, we don't know her age because she was a wild collected adult. She could be anywhere from, you know, 10 to 35, who knows. Irene, and yes, the keepers can tell them apart, also has an official number designation. She is one of the hellbenders living and, more importantly and amazingly, reproducing in what is no mere trough, but a working replica of an Ozark stream. We are reproducing them here. Like I said, we have every year since 2011. So for the last three years in a row, we've successfully reproduced them. This is about your typical size of an adult. There are two streams side by side, and this was moving day. The temperature, the current, the minerals in these streams all carefully controlled to match the hellbender's native habitat, the spring-fed streams and rivers of the Ozarks. There were once maybe 10,000 or more of these guys living in Missouri and northern Arkansas, but over time, for some reason, or for many reasons, they declined into the hundreds. And that's a problem, and the sign of maybe a bigger problem. Um, you'll notice that she's missing the, the right foot and uh, back right leg. Um, and unfortunately, that's some of the issues that we see in the wild. About 70 to 80 percent of the animals that we find on the Ozark rivers have got some sort of anomaly. A big part of this is simply preserving the species, biodiversity, the balance in the Ozark River ecosystem. But there's more to it than that. Hellbenders may not be as majestic or cuddly as some other endangered animals. After all, one of their nicknames is snot otter. But freshwater species are disappearing just as fast or faster, and amphibians are at the greatest risk. The hellbender has lungs, but underwater, it absorbs oxygen along those rippling folds of skin. And whatever is in the water, it absorbs that too. Think canary in the coal mine. We depend on water just as much as these animals do, so if there are problems that are inherent in the water that are impacting hellbenders and other forms of wildlife, it's going to impact us eventually, too. And so the zoo, the Missouri Department of Conservation, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services, scientists, universities, they set out to save the hellbender. At first they had to figure out how to breed them in captivity, raise them, so they could put them back into the streams. Catching a hellbender is pretty easy. They spend most of their days living in nests under rocks. But reproducing in captivity, that would take 10 years. There were so many things they had to get right, so many things that could and did go wrong. They started with an indoor stream. The males and females were doing their jobs, but the eggs just weren't getting fertilized. Every year, the zookeepers would adjust this or that, but still no babies. A few years ago, they tried something else. They thought maybe an outside environment would help, and they built the outdoor streams. These are roomier. The lidded nesting boxes are half buried and comfortably spaced, mimicking the rock nests of the territorial hellbenders. But still, there was no success. So they went back to the water itself, which had always been treated. But they began looking at the ion and mineral concentrations in the Ozark streams and they tweaked the water at the zoo. And lo and behold, that seemed to be the last key. It was, I remember the date, it was October 18th, 2011. We opened up one of the nest boxes out back and there was all these fertile eggs. They didn't just hatch 63 baby hellbenders, they made history. It was the first time anybody had bred them in captivity. Now, every fall, the keepers, all certified divers, reach in the nest and remove a long string of eggs which are then placed in these trays. And we also shake the eggs or rock the eggs three times a day physically. And that's to take account what the male is doing in the bottom of the river. These are our newest babies. This is a good time to review that science lesson on amphibians. They're born with gills, totally aquatic. 
and while the adult hellbenders do live and breathe mostly underwater, there is a point when they develop lungs. We actually see that transformation, it's pretty unique. They're actually kind of an awkward phase, like we call it the awkward teenager phase. But you can watch them, they'll figure it out though. They'll come to the surface, they'll gulp air. And now there are thousands of hellbenders in these tanks. Actually two subspecies from two different Ozark River systems are bred separately. The eastern hellbenders and the Ozark hellbenders will be placed back into the streams where their parents were caught. There they will feast on, among other things, crayfish. But generally, they don't bother people. They're not poisonous, not aggressive. It seems we're more interested in them than they are in us. So for us, being able to help uh, conserve a species that's right in our backyard, because you know, less than two hours from here, you can, you can be in the habitat of these guys. You don't have to go to Madagascar for this, do you? don't have to go to Madagascar, <laughs> you know, and we've been able to make a big impact right here at home. The Hellbender Project in Missouri is a success so far, but only up to a point. The population is being increased, but what about the factors that caused them to decline so dramatically in the first place? Was it disease, climate change, pollution, people collecting them for pets? Were their nests being filled up with silt because of changing riverbank vegetation? The zoo-raised hellbenders are being put back at various ages to see at what point in their development they are most vulnerable. And that means tracking, counting, measuring, at least for the next 15 years. We need to be paying attention to what's going on in these wild situations, just because eventually it's gonna work its way up the chain to us.